most uh, uh, opposition parties. The ANC used its parliamentary majority to reject it. For more on this, I am joined now by Mamid Resibei. He's a lecturer in the Department of Jurisprudence at UNISA University. Thank you very much uh, for your time here on ENCA, Mamid uh, Just first of all, your reaction to this, you're saying that uh, uh, the DA in its application was misdirecting. Just explain why you would say that. So the point we are making is simple. There is every reason for ordinary working class and poor people in this country to be concerned about corruption, about mediocrity, about mismanagement and incapacity or other incompetence within the public service, which I think has ground many of the public services um, to the level um, you know, of substandard and poor quality service in many working class areas. But we are saying that what the DEA is pursuing, um, you know, is, is, is disingenuous in a sense that what the DEA seeks to do basically is to entrench the immunity of the state and, and the bureaucratic apparatus of the state from any change and any influence by any party that comes to power. And that is a problem almost as if it suggests that the people that were appointed many of them, of course, um, during apartheid, um, that they had any merit other than the fact that they were white. Secondly, is the fact that the DA is misdirecting the public discourse in a sense that the way it diagnoses the problem is almost as if the so-called cater development, a, you know, de deployment policy of the ANC on and by itself explain all the crises that we have. When mm -hmm. the, a the DA shares with the ANC many of the policy a framework that actually create this crisis in the first place. Mm. But would you agree that, uh, you know, the policy of CADA deployment uh, um, at the moment, it's not being implemented correctly? Because here and there we'd find that in state utilities, for instance, there are those who are not meant to be at those utilities uh, actually heading uh, some of our parastatals, for instance. So w would you say that they, the ANC is actually implementing their own policy correctly? Let's understand firstly, I mean, you know, in the revolutionary lexicon, um, mm. the CADA used to be, you know, a very highly trained, um, you know, activist who personified the best ideas and the value of the movement exactly. committed to transformation, committed to revolution. The ANC is no longer committed to that, um, if it ever was. Mm. Secondly, what the ANC deploys are therefore not CADAs. ANC, it deploys you know, thieves, it employs mediocres, it employs all the corrupt elements to facilitate the accumulation by dispossession of the tenderpreneur aspirant black capitalist class, but also the cooperate, the big cooperations that continue to monopolize the economy. And the criticism that we are developing of the DA in that respect is that the DA is actually standing for the system the very system of neo-colonial, neoliberal capitalism that in the final analysis requires in this period austerity in public services, which is a main reason that there is collapse because of poor funding, cuts on spending on many public services, including education, health, and so on. Secondly, it stands for privatization, but also for outsourcing of those services. Now, once you speak privatization and outsourcing, you speak about a sabotage of public services. You speak about, you know, bribery involved in tender, in tendering system and other things and so on. All of that are almost unavoidable because the only alternative that you end up with is either the ANC that rests to some degree on an aspirant black capitalist class without an historically accumulated capital experience and the skill, and therefore resort to bribery and all those things, or a well-established, well-equipped, well-capitalized, white capital, uh, you know, white, predominantly white big corporations, um, which then you end up with, um, you know, a white monopoly over the economy. And you just have to look what is happening in Western Cape to see what the DA proposed as an alternative. Western Cape is an enclave, uh, effectively, of you know um, a white, um, 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 uh, almost a white minority state, and um, um, to a degree, and and I think that is a problem. 
that um, you have a situation where the, 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 so we are saying that the DA is misdirecting the public discourse here. The mm -hmm. ultimate cause of the crisis in the state is the commitment um, to a preservation of a new colonial and a new liberal capitalist system that is incapable of meeting the requirements of the majority is the fact that in government is not a class with a revolutionary program, including transformation of the state to overturn it in the interest of an overwhelming majority of the working class and poor people and ensuring that they provide services that um, would meet the requirements of communities in this country, as well as then deploy a cadre of the revolution for that task. Mm. Uh, you know, I just want to know from you um, if you think that it's uh, uh, basically an admittance, some of the bills that have been brought forward by uh, ministers that are uh, obviously with the ANC, for instance, the public enterprises minister, uh, wanting us to comment as the public on a bill that he drafted or that his department drafted uh, pertaining to all SOEs in the country, saying that uh, uh, maybe government should consider uh, being like Malaysia, where they have a holding company uh, that would... Uh, basically uh, disqualify the need for line um, uh, 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 ministers in each of those SOEs or departments that look after those, those SOEs. Is it an admit admittance firstly, but at the same time, uh, you know, having the president actually choose the board members of this particular holding company, that would still be cater deployment, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, all of these programs that government is proposing, they are gimmicks. Let's be clear about it, right? Ultimately, it's just different recipes of the same menu. And what is the menu here? You have the state that basically is committed to a creation of a class without capital, right? How is that class going to accumulate? Other than through the plunder and the loot of the state, which is a real reason behind the privatizations, behind the outsourcing, that they are basically handing over public assets public services to people that are without capital, are without the requisite experience, are without, um, of course, the skills and all the things that people are bemoaning. And I'm saying the deployment of the mediocrity, of the thieves, of the corruption, and mm. of all the incompetence flow from that. And from that perspective, DA represents not an alternative because DA is committed in a final analysis to the preservation of the same system. So basically, the only way that you are ultimately going to be able to address the problem in the public service in so far as governance and management is concerned. I, for one, am on record, but also our movement is on record as saying, you need a democratic control and management of the public you know, um, services and so on. And if you look what actually is currently happening, um, let's say at universities where I'm located, because people think you are talking, so, you know, we are talking something out of this world. When we are looking at, you know, universities where we are located, by the way, um, you know, councils are made up of representatives of workers, of students, of communities, of elected officials and so on, uh, you know, public officials, right? That represent mm -hmm. communities in those constituencies, like municipalities. Now, it is precisely this sort of governance that ensures that management that are appointed are appointed among the skilled people which the system is not perfect, by the way. I'm not saying it's perfect. Yeah. If anything, it's corrupted, amongst others, by the way, by some mm -hmm. of the deployments from the national governments that introduce tenders in higher education. And mm -hmm. these are some of the reasons behind the scandals that we have had in higher education. But we are saying that through a democratically elected representative of workers in those public services, representatives of communities, we can be able to have you know, services that function in the interest of the people, where yeah. the investment made by the government and the state goes to improvement in the quality of those services. And ultimately, right. you have management made up of practically minded, sound, um, technically sound mm. scientists and engineers and so on that can be able to run these services adequately and, of course, in the interest of right. working class people to the best standards possible. 
Mm, all right, Mamitla, thank you very much uh, for your time here on ENCA. Mamitla Sibay basically uh, saying that in its form, when it became a policy, there was nothing wrong with cater deployment until it became about doing favors for each other and, of course, uh, probably also uh, pocketing some money from the public purse. That's when it started becoming a problem.